Any man can make mistakes, but only an idiot persists in his error. Mistakes evolve to form guns too, but carrying them along and endangering people around makes one an idiot. Today, we will be checking the five worst guns that only idiots carry. What makes these guns so terrible? A bad recoil, a low range, or inaccuracy? Let's find out. Stay till the end to find out which gun is the worst and what is the perfect recipe for a disaster. The SCCY PCX2 is one of the cheapest guns on the market, starting at around $300, which is a fairly significant reason why one would buy this. It has a firing mechanism that is double action only, a caliber of 9mm, and a weight of 15 ounces, a barrel length of 3.1 inches. As mentioned before, the CPX2 is double action only, so with every trigger pull, you're cocking the hammer back. That force is felt in the trigger and essentially makes it particularly heavy pull, at around 9 pounds. It comes with a slide release, but no safety. That can be a problem for many. It has some rear serrations on the slide, but none on the front, which is quite significant and isn't particularly a negative, but keep in mind if you prefer front serration be included. The grip has some mild texturing on it as well as some finger grooves, which are a few of its better features. The horrible trigger and serious reliability issues make this gun less than optimal. The gun looks ergonomic but is uncomfortable to shoot, contrary to popular belief. At any price point, a gun should not sacrifice its basic purpose, to provide the shooter with a generally safe and reliable way to fire a gun. Even at the low price point they offer, there are much better options out there. Yes, it's cheap, but you get what you really pay for, and self-defense items mostly are one of those things that you should spend a little bit fairly extra on. The SCCY CPX2 specifically is a mixed bag. Don't be tempted by the price point, but a gun that doesn't work reliably actually is dangerous. Colt 2000 pistol was introduced in January 1991. It was initially designed by C. Reed Knight and Eugene Stoner and then adopted by Colt. It is probably the only modern pistol to use barrel rotation to lock and unlock the breech, a system used by comparatively few designs during the XX century. It is also known as Colt All-American 2000. The Colt M2000 is 9mm caliber with a polymer or aluminum frame, 15 shot magazine capacity, simplistic operation, no external safeties or decocking levers, striker fire design, no hammer, trigger cocking action or single action or double action only, and the heavy trigger pull wasn't desirable. However, a lousy trigger won't necessarily sink a gun. What will sink a gun is an unreliable design. Colt All-American pistols were notoriously unreliable and often failed to make it through an entire magazine without a malfunction. Additionally, in 1993, they were recalled due to a safety issue where the guns could fire when dropped or even struck hard. Accuracy was a major issue as well. Its long double-action trigger combined with a kooky front design did nothing to help in that department. The front sight sits on the barrel bushing, and as the barrel bushing wears, the lockup becomes a little loose. So when the barrel bushing becomes loose, the sight drifts. The Colt All-American was an odd duck or an innovative swan, depending on how you view it. Most would say it's an ugly gun with a very interesting aesthetic. When you look at the odd design, the terrible trigger, the horrid reliability, and the abysmal accuracy, it's no wonder the All-American only saw two years of production. Colt was embarrassed by the weapon and rightfully canned the design. Reportedly, the design almost bankrupt Colt. At the beginning of the 20th century, inventors tried to create a self-loading pistol. Eventually, the Colt M1911 would become the standard. But before that, many mistakes, like the Mars pistol, were made. The Mars Automatic Pistol, also called the Weebly Mars or the Gabbett Fairfax, is a British semi-automatic pistol. The gun proved incredibly unpopular with those unfortunate enough to use it. The captain in charge of tests of the Mars at the Naval Gunnery School in 1902 observed, No one who fired once with the pistol wished to shoot it again. Firing Mars was described as singularly unpleasant and alarming. The Mars had an interesting feed system where it pulled cartridges out of the magazine 
from the rear and then lifted them to the breech face, a method of operation that has only ever found a place in later belt-fed machine guns. Whenever it fired, the whole forend would recoil back to cycle the weapon, pushing back on the slide and ejecting the spent casing rewards. The Mars was very complicated to operate and ejected used cartridges directly into the shooter's face. All samples produced were handmade and hand-finished. Thus, no two are exactly alike in proportions, so some have characteristics others do not. Mars accepted 8.5mm Mars, 9mm Mars, 45 Mars long case, and 45 Mars short case. All these cases are bottlenecked with large powder charges, formulating muzzle velocities more generally associated with rifles. The pistols which fired 45 rounds were the most powerful in the world at the time. Ultimately, the Mars pistol was a big no-no that was hazardous to the user, not just physically, but also mentally. The Remington 740 could have the potential to be one of the all-time great rifles, but dreams remain dreams. The 740 is a magazine-fed semi-automatic rifle with a long recoil piston operating system that was virtually copied from the 1100 shotgun. The wood was plain, unchecked walnut with no grip cap and sported a cast aluminum butt plate. They are light, convenient, well-balanced, and classically beautiful, with a drop to the stock and a slender receiver reminiscent of the 1100s, all combined to evolve a gorgeous shotgun. Had the 740 been made well, it would make a seriously good do-it-all rifle. Visually, it was the total package, a great deal, but two key design flaws were its end. First is the controls. The trigger is average, and saying that is generosity, and can't be easily made any better. And the magazine release is atrocious, to say the least. Secondly, they designed a bolt with about two dozen radial fins as the locking lugs. The receiver rails the bolt rides in are about as soft as balsa wood. As you shoot the gun more, the bolt lugs chatter and eat into the receiver. Eventually, the wear becomes such that the bolt won't rotate into the battery. Remington projected a service life of a thousand rounds. Initial forearms and finger grooves running horizontally, most of the length, weakening them. It was not equipped with factory sling swivels. Rear sights were dovetailed into the barrel for Remington's unusual rear sight, while the small front ramp was silver soldered to the barrel and dovetailed for the front sight. The takedown process was complex and a total disappointment too. Field stripping is taking off the forend and taking out the trigger group. You can't take out the bolt with a tool kit and the bench. The owner is left with the choice of retiring or junking the rifle, using it as a straight pull bolt action or converting it into a pump action with parts from a Remington 760. It could have been all things to all men, but went down in history. The most overpromising and underpromising pistol on this list is the Apache pistol. This pistol emerges to combine the effective elements of a knife, brass knuckles, and a small caliber revolver into a neat, fold out package made notorious by the French underworld figures of the 1900s, known as Les Apaches. The Apache operates on the principle of a pepper box revolver using a pinfire cartridge and incorporates a fold over knuckle duster forming the grip and also rudimentary fold-out, dual-edged knife. But just as a dish with too many mismatched ingredients is always a disaster, the Apache was a total failure. In practice use, none of the three components of the weapon could deliver the desired result. The brass knuckle component worked to a moderate level, but the knife is delicate and flimsy on its hinge. The revolver has virtually no barrel and is underpowered and inaccurate. The revolver's effective range is very limited, but since all of its parts can be folded inward towards the cylinder, it was easily concealable inside a pocket. It was lightweight with a mass of 385 grams and a length of 200 millimeters when unfolded. It is a double action only gun with a six round detaching cylinder feeding system. It was common to leave an empty chamber with no cartridge under the hammer to prevent shooting oneself while having it concealed in a pocket or bag, as the weapon has no trigger guard or safety. This weapon is not able to be aimed precisely because of its lack of front and rear sights. 
Hey, want to check if you're an idiot gun owner? Let's check your aim. Hit that subscribe button and prove yourself. Want to know the other end of the spectrum? The worst to the best guns available out there. Then check out Top 5 Guns That Will Blow Your Mind.